welcome to Florida Focus, the college football podcast. We have a Seminole and a Gator together, trying to put aside their differences and bring you the fantastic world of college football. Thank you for joining us on this ride of hype, hope, and hilarity. My name is Brandon, and I'm joined by Chris. How are you feeling about today's episode, my friend? Um, I'm feeling really good because um, this was my favorite, or still is, my favorite position. Um, Growing up, I've always wanted to be the receiver I couldn't throw to save my life (laughs) and tackling just yeah we we didn't we weren't friends but I liked receiver a lot and I liked watching the receivers still do today so it's my favorite um, position so I'm really excited about it well it it certainly was a lot of fun for me as well I don't know that I have a favorite position but this is probably top three if I had to rank it somewhere So, we wanted to break down for our fans our personal top five wide receivers in school history. I think we'll kind of input other ways, like I have a short list for top five Gators, but of course mine will be Florida State. Chris will give you his top five Gator receivers, and you might have a top five Florida State as well. Yeah. So, just a couple of thoughts before we get started. We're going to be doing a list based on their college careers only. So yeah. any NFL presence by these guys is not accounted for. Um, what was the other parameter we were talking about, Chris? Was there something else we want to let fans know about? Um, they are mainly receivers. They might have done other stuff, other played other positions and stuff, but we're mainly going to focus on their um, receiving. Okay, that's right. So if there yeah. was um, – I think each of us probably have one uh, player at least that we mentioned did some other – football duties but wide receiver was their main go-to position right excellent so also just an added note these are our personal top fives and i can say with certainty mine is going to be controversial i already know this and i welcome the feedback but i'm not going to shy away from my opinion because i feel like it is truly a very good list yeah this is emphasis on the favorite five not not the top five because there's two there's probably two guys on my list that You can make serious arguments as top three, maybe top one, that aren't even on my list. Um, But this is my favorite, the ones that I liked growing up watching. Well said, well said. And I speak for both of us when I say this was very hard for us to put together, very hard to put the final rankings in. I could have put probably my number three as the number one, and I probably could have put a guy who was honorably mentioned in the top three. So very, very tough, and it's very just. It's very contingent on a lot of different things, in my opinion. Uh, does yeah. that kind of echo the same kind of struggle you had? Yeah, I mean, my my number one was solid um, f- from day one, but two to five, it's yeah, it's a toss up. And, and even four and five, I literally just changed. I don't know, five ten minutes ago, right. they, they've been <laughs> back and forth. Um, on our previous list, I actually swapped uh, mid recording. Uh, okay. that's that's how tough some of these can be for me and so right let's uh i have my list here and let's see how much it changes by the time we're done yeah well let's go ahead on and we'll uh just a reminder to the listeners for the format i'll i'll let chris go first with number five i'll go back with number five and we'll alternate just like that so chris we'll start with you number five wide receiver for florida um it's like i said this guy is was number four a minute ago. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we'll just dive right into it. And that is Redell Anthony. He was um, a receiver in the fun and gun era, national championship era. And he he and another guy, um, Ike Hilliard and J- uh, Jacquez Green, um, just a, a nice one, two, three punch at receiver for the – um, eventual Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Danny Warfel, and he was just one of those guys. You, you say, "Hey, throw a, throw a fade dock. He's going to jump out the building to get it. You want to throw a post. He's going to be um, several feet behind um, the defender, um, ready to catch the ball. Um, possession, speed. He had it all, and um, he uh, he is just part of that." He, uh, really fun um, era in Gator football. He actually had a streak uh, in the 96 season. I think it was um, 
We got nine, it was 95 to the 96 season, I believe. I, I'm probably wrong on the number, but it was like 15 games, 14 games in a row where he caught a touchdown pass. And the streak ended in the Sugar Bowl against Florida State. Oh. And I think, I don't know if it was just SEC or NCAA record, but it was tied, I don't know, like 10 years after that. Um, but, yeah, it was crazy. Cause, and then you – I hear gets like three touchdowns in that game. So I'm like, it, just one of them could have gone to him, just one. But uh, but still, um, phenomenal player and really exciting to watch. Great choice. Uh, any any guy from the 90s. Uh, right, Especially yeah. from, go, from Danny. Yeah, can't go wrong, yeah. certainly. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had like 26 total touchdowns, um, but he had 18 in the 96 season. And... I don't know if that's been broke. I think it was a record. It's probably been broken since then. But 18 in the in one season, it's pretty phenomenal. It is indeed. I'm just curious, since I didn't do a whole lot of numbers looking into the Gator receivers, did you see a lot of guys who maybe had one or two good seasons but maybe couldn't make the list just because overall they didn't have performance or any trends like that? Um. Yeah, there, there was, we had several after that too, um, like the Rex Grossman era. A lot of guys that had a couple good seasons, but as a career, uh, just didn't really make the list. Um, guys like Taylor Jacobs, um, Ruche Caldwell, um, a few other guys like that. That and uh, um, Daryl Jackson, I think is his name. Travis Taylor, really solid couple of years and left early, but um, but not really uh, career wise uh, putting up all those numbers. Okay. And another guy um, who's going to make my honorable mention that I'll mention too that falls exactly into that category. Okay. Perfect. Oh. Rodell Anthony. Certainly remember him. Yeah. Nah, not fun to go up against that talent. <laughs> no. So, all right. Number five for UF. Okay, let's jump to number five, Florida State. And this actually is a guy that I feel had some really good singular seasons, but – pretty solid overall career and that's eg green okay. um, he had 166 catches all time which is good for fifth um, he had 2900 career yards which was fourth tied for second all time with touchdowns at 29 um, and he was early 90s played with number 17 first heisen winner charlie ward okay so he makes my number five because he had a really solid career, but a lot of it came in the 93 season, I believe. So the numbers kind of look inflated um, because of that one season. But right. still a fantastic receiver. Um, him and another honorable mention I'll talk about later kind of had a really good one-two. And you, you knew that he was going to be in a good position to catch the ball, but he also made us available for yards after catch. So that's why E.G. Green right. gets number five. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you're gonna see a lot of that yep. on my list for sure. But okay. that's at least one guy on your list I know is gonna <laughs> big on the yak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, cool. So we are at uh, my number four then. Yes, sir. All right, and this guy um, just he there is one play that puts him above Riedel Anthony, and this is Riedel Anthony's running mate, and that is Ike Hilliard. Um, this is another guy. He just you throw the ball up and. Um, I, he didn't play for the basketball team, but he could have. And he's one of those guys you throw a, throw a slant to him, and he's going to make some moves. You could also throw a post. Um, he did everything. But the one play that really separated him from, from Anthony was the Sugar Bowl. And I'm sorry. It's the stop and pop. <laughs> where I know I don't want to – you don't want to revisit it, but I will. And I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, Warfel throws it over in the middle. He catches it, stops on the dime, and two Seminoles went this way and that way, and he went up for a touchdown. Um, it's it's just like the the Top Top Gun movie, where it says, "I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the brakes to fly right by me," and that's <laughs> exactly what the, you're gonna do. What? <laughs> he hit the brakes, and um, and I, I I often think like if he was not on AstroTurf, would that have actually worked? Um, but I, we don't have to worry about that because it did. Um, but he he was another just electric um, 
receiver and fun to watch and a big piece and, and reason why Warfel won the Heisman that year. Stop and pop. Didn't realize it had a name. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's very famous among Gator fans. Wow. You just say, I kill your stop and pop? They, they... And whenever we're feeling down, we just replay that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It, it, that game was just so brutal. It, it's like the victory we had early that season didn't matter at all. It never happened. It... Yeah. I mean, it is tough. Like, it's tough to beat a team twice in a year. It really is. Um. So I mean, anytime another anytime that happens since then, I feel bad a little bit for the team that has to play to beat them twice, you know? Because you're right. What was the point of the first one? Right. You know, like the LSU and Alabama, um, the game of the century, and then like, wait a minute, we got to play each other again? Right. It's tough. But then again, um, we can't. You know, Florida knew what was at stake, and so did Florida State. So you you can't come out flat like we did, and. Uh, that was a glaring example of exactly that happening, unfortunately. Um, wow, it's it's. I love your take there that one play is the difference between five and four. It's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like it. Okay. Well, number four, I mentioned earlier, uh, numbers play a factor into why some of these guys are ranked where they are for me. The numbers on this guy, surprisingly, at Florida State were not all that great um, compared to the other, you know, maybe top 10. But I'm going to put him there anyway because of his athleticism, and that's Anquan Bolden. Okay. He's my fourth, <laughs> and he was number four. Yes, okay, um, good call. <laughs> Did he wear also number one at one point, or am I mixing up people? I don't think so, and no, I was just four okay. the whole time. Uh, Anquan was a quarterback in high school, and... Came to Florida State as a quarterback as well. Bowden also had another guy out of California, a guy named Chris Ricks. Oh, yeah. So Anquan, instead of deciding to compete, said, okay, I'll just be a wide receiver, which is what he did. Uh, an interesting turn of events in the 2002 Sugar Bowl, when Chris Ricks was not able to play, we had our backup quarterback, and I'll remember his name in a second, and he wasn't doing a terrific job in the Sugar Bowl against the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. So in the second half, Bowden said, okay, Anquan, you're our quarterback the rest of the game. And we nearly came back and won. Uh, it was pretty close, one possession most of the time until Georgia pulled away late. So you talk about a guy who just st stepped up in a game right. where we needed him the most. That was him. Career-wise, he did have... Uh, pretty decent numbers, almost 1,800 career yards. He had 21 touchdowns, which is eighth all time. But he was just a really big possession guy. And in 2002, he had 65 catches. So that was, to me, his best season. Uh, he was kind of guy who saw the field so well. And he right. would always be in the right spot. And he would be upset if, as a team, we couldn't make a play. You would see him visibly like showing aggression or... Not upset like maybe the quarterback overthrew him or that he could have got more yards after catch. But, you know, small things that he realized would have helped the team win, he always knew we could do better. So he was kind of a guy that could push us there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember him actually starting off at quarterback and then moving to receiver. Yeah. I, th I'm, I think in the video game, too, the college football video game, they had him at um, – quarterback still <laughs> and he was already playing i mean i know that because i played against florida state a lot right. so uh, I, this stuff sticks out to me <laughs> why <laughs> well i mean i can't remember important things but uh i remember <laughs> several years ago the opponent's quarterback that turned a receiver but whatever yeah some would see it as important uh well yeah. we can go with that at least sure i have a funny story about him actually all right um in uh, in college, he was with the I believe he he was playing for the Cardinals. I believe he was playing for the Cardinals in the NFL. Right. And it was the Cardinals and somebody playing in Mexico, and when they just started doing that, probably the Forty ers And I remember there's this uh, me and my roommate Alan we just laughed so hard because they had a a recording of the ESPN Deportes announcer 
you know, and they usually call soccer goals, right? And they have this big elaborate goal, oh, right? Um, well, this is like the first time they were doing this in Mexico, and um, Anquan Bolden scores a touchdown. And it was just funny because he it's just the announcer going, touchdown, Arizona, Anquan Bolden, 81. <laughs> <laughs> it is the funniest thing in the world. It's just so, I don't know, just, it was, it was hilarious. Touchdown. And it was just the Arizona. Arizona. I can't, do, I can't do the accent, but <laughs> Anquan Bolden, eighty-one. It was, it's just hilarious to me. Every time I, I, I see that name or think about him, I can't help but think about that announcer. <laughs> <laughs> nice reference. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know. We said we separate the NFL career, but right. with with him, it's probably the hardest because he had so much success there. Yeah, he did. Uh, I mean, how is many he, guys? Is he still playing? He, I think, he just retired. Okay, and he's. I think he played for Baltimore most recently. Yeah. But Arizona, probably for the longest part of his career. And how many guys can say they score a touchdown to Mexico? You know, so good for him. For real. Yeah. <laughs> good on him. Good stat. So, yeah, that he's my number four. Uh, mostly an emotional because I, that was when I was high school entering college. And he was clearly the best receiver we had. And we knew he was going to go pro. So, it was really exciting to watch him. Right, right. Awesome. Okay. So that'll put us uh, for you, Chris, number three wide receiver at Florida. Yeah. All right, this is a guy who um, his dad, uh, I believe it was dad, played for Florida years before, and he was only there. He only played for two years, but registered the first year, so he was on campus for three. And that is Jabbar Gaffney. Um, he like a freshman, um, All American. He had 27 touchdowns, and he played with Rex Grossman. And he just came out of nowhere his, his redshirt freshman year and just was this – if you wanted a possession receiver um, who was, could take a hit and um, was really reliable, this was the guy for you. And uh, uh, Warfel had his three, and, and Rexman kind of had his three. Rishay Caldwell, Taylor Jacobs, and – um, Jabbar Gaffney with Jabbar leading, leading it, leading that team. And it was just real fun to see. And I remember um, it was a, a game at Tennessee, and we were it was back and forth. We were losing, and within the last few minutes, uh, Grossman throws a pass to him down the sideline. He catches it. He gets hit, going out of bounds, and then he would end up scoring a controversial touchdown. Um, with, I don't know, like, I want to say like 20 seconds left. They threw it to him and he caught it and the guy poked it out. And it's one of those, if you review it today, probably not a touchdown. <laughs> but back then they didn't have it. They didn't have a replay. Touchdown stands and we beat Tennessee. And I just remember Tennessee fans were so angry <laughs> about him in that play. So that really is like, oh, Tennessee doesn't like you? I really like you now. <laughs> so he was always fun to watch. I remember that play. Now, is, that, is this the one where he's standing and he's he's basically – he runs a dig so that he's like maybe a yard within the end zone and it was a question of whether or not he possessed it before it fell out? Yep. Yeah, okay. that's the one. He just kind of boxed the guy out. And the guy was smart. The defender was smart to, to poke at it. Um, and it's one of those – it's kind of questionable, but just the fact that Tennessee fans were so angry at him okay. and us really, <laughs> really made me like him. Wow. Yeah. So he it, it, it was fun. Fun to watch. Jamar Gaffney. So then he would have played, was that late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere around there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe uh, 2000, 2001, I believe. He's going to play 27 touchdowns in two years. Yeah, I know. It was good. Incredible. Of course, you had Grossman, who, in a lot of Gator fans' mind, should have won the Heisman. Um, so, But he, he finished second in Heisman voting. Yes. So we'll, we'll go, but that's – although we think he got robbed, but that's what that's how they voted. So I'll leave it at that. I'll save it for another episode. And for the fans that we continue to push to reach out to us, we had a very interesting Facebook thread on this conversation as well. Yeah, exactly. So um, go to our page and check that out. It's it's the best feedback that we've seen so far. I love it. Um, yeah. So there you go. If you want to get some more information, that's where you can find it. 
All right, Jabbar Gaffney, number three. Perfect. Okay. This is where the list for me gets really interesting. Okay. For Florida State, this is, number three wide receiver is a guy I never even watched play. I look at his numbers, and I see the trends he set in Florida State history. You simply can't ignore it. Looking at just his numbers, you could probably even put this guy number one if you wanted, and I'd be okay with that. Right. But I won't because there are so many other guys that have done things after him. And so he makes number three, and that is Ron Sellers. Ron Sellers, okay. Uh, now, he played in the 1960s. That's how far back his career goes. He was number okay. four, number 34, excuse me, and that number was retired until the early 2000s. Um, Derek Brooks did a special. Um, we used to have what was called a Seminole Legends highlight reel. You'd right. play it during some of the games. And he said, and I'll quote him, it's easier to say how many records Ron Sellers doesn't have than to list the ones that he does. Wow. So he had 86 catches in 1968. Um, You talk about single game records, he was the king of it. Um, There were at least five that he still holds to this day. Um, And he held dozens prior to this. But overall career, he had 212 catches, which is second all time. 3,500 uh, career yards, second all-time. 29 touchdowns tied for second all-time. This is all done in a day when there wasn't even an emphasis on passing. Right. And just to look at him, to see, you know, they're actually, you can find some highlight reels. He's wide open on every single play. <laughs> he, he found space, and he would he would just make his way through. He had a nickname, it's Jiggle Joints. So what joints? Jiggle Joints. Jiggle Joints. Jiggle Joints. Get on out there. We need you to catch some passes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how can you not love that name? That's a great name. Uh, so that's that's the reason why I put Ron Seller so high on my list, that, to see all the records. And he's still involved with some of the other players, and basically his number – we ask if a guy wants his number to no longer be retired. So still good right. relationship with the university. So that that's why he's on my number three. I, I really think later on we should have a Fave Five – um, nicknames, just because of just because of him, I really hope he makes your list. I I was really hoping that once I said that you would recommend it. Uh, oh yeah, that's so hilarious. when the fans reach out to us this week, tell us if that's what you want to hear. Also, we're happy to do it. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Excellent. All right, so on to your number two then. Number two. All right. Um, this is probably a lot of people's number one. Um, and this is Mercy Percy Harvin. Mm-hmm. And um, I say Mercy Percy because that's the McHubert radio guy would always go, Mercy Percy. <laughs> and I, I see why, because this guy was electric. This guy was one of those guys, This anytime he touched the ball, um, he, he looked effortless. And a lot of times he looks like he was like skating when he was running. Oh, wow. Just, it just, I don't know. And a lot of times he, um, the system that we ran with Tebow in the spread, he would line up a running back a lot. But um, his main position was receiver, and he was fun to watch. He really was. He did it all. He's one of those guys that if, um, for whatever reason, Tebow or other guys weren't getting it done, he was super reliable. Um, he had actually – more rushing touchdowns than receiving touchdowns, 19 and 13. Um, but it's impressive that he, he, he was able to do that. And there's, there's just some times that he just made people look silly and uh, fun to watch, real fun to watch. Yeah, that's – yeah, it was, he was certainly impressive. And I think – I mean, this is the way Florida State approached Percy Harvin. It's – Whoever our best defender is, he's taking care of him the entire game, or at least trying to. Right, yeah. Uh, that was really the only way to scheme against it. Even that didn't yeah. work uh, for us. And as great as he was, he would be even better if he didn't have um, all the medical issues he had. He had suffered migraines, um, severe migraines, where he couldn't play games. And uh, one year they had he had like a high ankle sprain, missed the SEC championship game. Um, in, in, I believe, 08. But um, his freshman year, um, he was electric and then just right on through. But a lot of times you can make a case he wasn't the greatest receiver because he, like I said, played running back 
just as much. But even when he was uh, in receiver, going of oh, the shallow cross right across the middle, he was dangerous. Okay. He was dangerous. You, you throw that right to him, give him some space, and forget it. Forget it. Fantastic. I I certainly agree though that most people will probably have him have him at number one. And that now tells me I think I know who number one is. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's no doubt. <sighs> um, interesting. Very interesting. How do you think Florida fans are going to react when they hear it's your number two? Um, I think that the more younger fans will probably be upset, but the older ones probably not because there's some older receivers, like we're talking like 60s and stuff, that might make the list that I didn't get a chance to watch. Okay. Um, so, but then again, like I said, you can – you can make an argument that he wasn't one of the best receivers because he wasn't just receiver. He was a better running back than a receiver, you know? I was surprised to know that stat. He had more rushing touchdowns than receiving. Yeah. But still 31 total. That's whew, it's hard to ignore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive. Okay. So number two. Now you said your number two was most people's number one. I'm going to venture a guess and say that my number two is probably everybody's number one. And that's Peter Warwick. Okay. Fantastic okay. talent. Will be retired uh, number-wise at Florida State this year. Right. Against Virginia Tech. How fitting. Yes, yes, of course. Peter Warwick was just a human highlight reel. There is no other way to put it. In 1999, he had 71 catches. He was also a punt returner. Um, as far as touchdowns go, career-wise, number one all-time, 31. So this guy just flat wow. out would find the end zone. He could make plays. Um, third overall in career yards, third overall in total catches. And I think the only thing that held him back was an incident off the field in 1999. Because of this, he was suspended for two games. It was a shoplifting incident. Entering the 99th yep. season, he was the runner-up to, to favor to win the Heisman Trophy. Um, as a wide receiver, as a non-quarterback, really, it's, it's very hard to do. Because of this, he didn't play two games, so his numbers weren't as good as they could have been, and he ends up finishing sixth. Uh, that 1999 game we played the Gators, there were a lot of Dillard's bags in the stands. Yep, I remember that. And, you know, not that he didn't bring it on himself, but... Uh, Interesting way to take a jab. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he like also it. had some really good seasons. 98 was actually probably a better year for him, uh, numbers-wise, simply because he played all games. And, man, he was certainly fun to watch. And, you know, a, a dangerous punt returner. He had some trick plays. Probably the two plays that stand out to me, one was against UF. Uh, we, I think it was 98, we threw a pass that was deflected by the DB. Mm-hmm. Somehow, Peter Work stayed in the area, caught it, juked all his way all the way to the end zone. Yeah. And we were kind of struggling-ish at that point, and that was clearly a play the defensive back just, just had it red and just didn't get quite enough on the ball to deflect it fully away. So Ugh. That, that one that one hurts a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah, that one hurts. The, the other play that I remember him for was, I know it's against lesser talent, but it was against Louisiana Tech. Yeah, that's the one that sticks out in my mind. Okay, so he he did this quite a few times where he would run to one side but were full, totally reverse field, and right. he he would literally take out the in, half of the defense, if not more of them, you know, six or seven missed tackles on his way to the end zone. Um, but the play above all plays that cements him in Florida State history was against Virginia Tech in 1999, the national championship game. Chris Winkie drops back and throws a bomb. And the corner that's covering him, bless his soul, he was all <laughs> over Peter Warwick. And he made his best effort, but in the last few steps, he realizes that he's going to catch the pass, so he blatantly pulls on him. Yeah. Peter Warwick somehow sneaks his hands underneath that pull, bounces it up in the air to himself to catch it for a touchdown. Um, it was As a kid, I look at that and I go, man... Even when guys commit pass interference on him, he still makes the play. It <laughs> yeah. was just mind blowing. I bet he was just um, so frustrating to defensive players. Yeah. Just like, what are we gonna do? Like, we can't 
we can't tackle him. <laughs> we can't pass in a few. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's going to make the play anyway. Um, yeah. So, yeah, solid number two. I get it. Forest State fans, be mad at me if you want. He's not my number one. Man, uh, I'm interested to hear, see who your number one is. I yeah. can think of one guy mm-hmm. off the top of my head, but – I don't know. We'll see. Okay. see I'm, ex- I'm interested. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let you go first, though. Let's hear your number one. All right. And this guy, um, he is probably my all-time favorite. No, my, he is my all-time favorite Florida player. Um, and this is a guy who um, played th- um, third third fiddle, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. I, was, I almost said third string, but he definitely was a starter. Um, third fiddle to Ike and Redell and... Um, 96, but really broke out in 97, and that is Jacquez Green, um, old Quezzy. Quezzy, and he was just so fun to watch to me. Growing up, um, uh, someone who was short, <laughs> this guy really <laughs> stuck out to me because he was short, yet he was playing with the big boys and playing really well. Very elusive, um, great deep threat, and also really good at returning punts, too. Um, he was, like I said, he did pretty good in 96, but it was 97 that really um, him made him stick out because uh, Ike and Riedel went to the pros, and he was the star, and he he, he balled out. And the, a couple plays that stick out to me um, – the first one that's always going to stick out to me is 96, we were playing Kentucky, and it was a blowout. We won like 65 to nothing, and he had returned a punt, and um, he went to the left, and there was – he's left on the sideline, and there was just a, a herd of people, some of his players, but other Kentucky players coming at him, and somehow he would weaved right in the middle of them. It was like five or six of them. We were right in the middle, went right, and scored a touchdown uh, on a punt return. It was just like the craziest thing I've ever seen live. And we were blowing them out, and it was like fourth quarter, and so we decided to leave. My mom um, wanted to beat the traffic. <laughs> Classic mom move. Okay. Um, as we're leaving, I see on the monitor, he, he's returning his second punt that game for a oh, touchdown. My goodness. <laughs> and I, I just remember like, this guy's good. <laughs> And he was their third best receiver on that team. Crazy. But the other play it was 90 and 97 against Florida State in the swamp. Yep. I, be, I think it was was it number one Florida State or number I think it was number one Florida State. We're we're down and a couple of minutes left and he he goes down the right side like a 62 yard bomb. He catches, um, works his way up the middle a little bit and a couple of late plays later we score, but. Just I remember going nuts because we were like, okay, we've got X amount of time to score. We've got a pretty decent offense. Oh, look, we're already down in the red zone. <laughs> just like that. You know, you're, you're, you're planning all these things. Like, we might have scored too quick. But just him going down the field and catching that bomb um, just really sticks out to me. And he, uh, he wore number five. And uh, when I went and played football, that brief stint on the bench – in high school, <laughs> I was on the bench wearing number five because of him. And anytime I played basketball, whatever, I, I chose number five because of him. Um, he'll always be my my favorite um, football player. And, he, and a lot of it is because he was short and I was short. And <laughs> he was playing right. Um, he was winning and playing right as I started to pay attention to the Gators so he really sticks out to me and um always a uh, always uh, fun to go back and watch some of his highlights he was pretty impressive he really was and he was in Hilliard and Anthony's shadows a lot but he still uh, stuck out to me excellent yeah, just the tiniest hint of man crush in that voice I can hear right yeah now. oh yeah absolutely <laughs> Uh, that doesn't surprise me. I, you and I have talked about him a lot, and he's certainly fantastic talent. Uh, just to add a little salt to that wound from the 97 game, the reason why that play stuck out and hurt even more for four states because we had scored right before that, but Sebastian Janikowski, in all of his glory, 
decided he would taunt the Gator fans by doing the Gator Chomp after he made the extra point. Right. And so that just, yeah, I, we probably deserved a little bit of that because of that action. <laughs> but, man, it certainly was painful, and she's, uh, that was one of the better uh, Force 8 40 games, though. It really was. Yeah, yeah it, so it was. They, they call that, that's dubbed the the greatest game ever played in the Swamp. swamp. Yeah, indeed. That, that whole title is the name of that game. And certainly was one of them, if not the greatest game. Sure. Just We came out on the wrong end of that one, unfortunately. <laughs> so, great choice. That's uh, fantastic. And we also know that he had a pretty good NFL career. Yeah, he did. He played for the Bucks. Um, <laughs> I actually had his, speaking of man crush, um, that was the first NFL jersey I got was his 81 Bucks jersey. Um, and it was funny wearing that. And everyone's like, all right, I know Derek Brooks. I know Barber. Who's green? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, trust me, man. You're going to want to get on that green train. Yes. Quezzy all the way. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, no surprise there. Uh, let's move on to my number one, and then we'll jump to our honorable mentions because I know we have a lot of those as well. Uh, number one wide receiver to me in Florida State history, my favorite, is actually a guy who holds two career records at the school. Tied okay. for second in touchdowns and was instrumental in all four years because he played all four, and he played with – several different quarterbacks, and he was fantastic for all of them, and that is Rashad Green, number 80. Uh, good call. He was so good at putting himself in the right position. He was so instrumental. He was always key in main drives where we needed a score. Yeah, There are two plays that stand out to me that I'll mention. His first quarterback he played for was E.J. Manuel. We're playing Virginia Tech on a Thursday night away. Always a tricky spot. This particular game, we had minus five rushing yards the entire night. They stuffed us, and so we had to throw the ball. It's getting late in the game, and we need to score to put it away. And who do we go to but Rashad Green? And he makes a fantastic cut, and he's gone down the sidelines. Puts us in great position to score and eventually win the game. So in a game where they know they've got your running game stopped, he makes a key play late to cement it. And we actually had the division on the line and so we had to win that game which we did because of Rashad Green right um, another key play that he made was in the 2013 National Championship we were playing Auburn Auburn scores with about a minute 14 ish left on the clock so we know we have to score because we're we're down four and we get stuffed on the first couple of plays and so it's third and long so I'm thinking here you go, Jameis. It's Rashad Green time. Sure enough, he makes a cut, and he does the exact same thing against Auburn. He gets <laughs> like a 50-yard gain, and so we're like, man, we're already in like their opponent's side of the field. It didn't take very long. Um, the only the only thing I wish had happened was he would have been the guy to catch the winning touchdown, but right. uh, it didn't matter who – I would have taken anybody catching that pass. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't... You'll, take the, you'll take the water boy at exactly. that point. Exactly. <laughs> So as long as it's legal, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Rashad Green, by the way, did break two Ron Sellers records, and Ron Sellers was really congratulatory about it and very supportive. But 270 career catches, 3,830 yards all time, so like 29 touchdowns, as I mentioned already. He had 99 catches in 2014. That is also a Florida State record. 99 catches. I, That's... You think, man, I bet he's just like – Thinking back of all the, probably not many, but all the drops he had that you see, him like, come on, just one. <laughs> one of those. I held on. Get get the triple digits. Um, and I think or, the second or place. Or a catch that he made that someone got, he was holding and he got called back. I bet he's just <laughs> kicking himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think second place as far as uh, catches in a year was like in the high 70s or low 70s. So he, the fact he got 99, it just obliterated the record. So he is my number one, and I don't know that he'll ever get his number retired, but in my book, he deserves it. So, so, look, so our number ones are both named Green. Indeed. Now, how is your spelled? Now he doesn't have an extra e. Okay. Mine. E G Green does. My number. Five. Okay, so Jacquez just has. E G Green yeah. is G R E E N E. 
Oh, okay, that's the one. Okay. So that was my number wow. five. Yeah. A lot of green on here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> number E.G. Green. I did look it up. Is eighty four. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> E.G. Green, if you happen to be listening to this podcast, yes. he really does know his stuff. My, my really apologies. Really I knew it all along. Like I was just, just teasing. He appreciates you. He talks about you all the time. <laughs> Please come on to this podcast. Yes. <laughs> we would love for you to be uh, part of the show. <laughs> so that's a great list. That's a lot of fun. Uh, love to hear some of your honorable mentions, and then I'll give you my top five Gator receivers. Okay, yeah. Uh, my honorable mentions, man, the list is so long. Um, yep. Now, you could put a lot of people are going to say Carlos Alvarez and or Chris Collinsworth. This is the old school guys that could make the list, especially yeah. Carlos Alvarez. He held a lot of records for a long time. But unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to watch him. Um, others, um, Chris Doring, for sure. I think he has like 31 touchdowns. And it might be, or at one point was an SEC record. Um, Travis McGriff talking about being short and white really uh, stuck <laughs> out to me. Uh, Bubba Caldwell, um, and Dallas Baker, um, touchdown big, maker. Yeah, you're right, Dallas Baker touchdown. He was one of those. He he wouldn't you wouldn't hear his name much the game, but we we'd only score two touchdowns, three touchdowns a game with that offense. But you guarantee he was one of those guys that scored a touchdown wow. <laughs> that game. Um. And a guy that w- actually would have made the list had he played another year or two, and that is um, Callaway, Antonio Callaway, who just got drafted, because he is a, he was a playmaker, um, but just too much off the field stuff. But I, you know, if he he played for two years, if he played any more, um, I really think that he would have made crept up on my list or really close. Wow, and he's actually. Um, the only Gator player to score at receiving touchdown, threw a touchdown pass, ran for one, returned a kick, and returned a punt. Hmm. Um, and in two years. And was electric, but man, just uh, too much off the field problems. So he he, he just missed. Okay. Wow. There's just tons, tons more I can name. But... Yeah. I had even asked you previously my own i was like could i have a tie You're like no can't have a tie yeah. so there were a couple of guys and one of these names you're instantly gonna laugh at um for it but anyway i'll i'll save that because i need to give my, my gator top five um my five to one i'll just go in order here real quick i kill your five jabbar gaffney four chris doreen three uh jacques green two and percy harvin one okay Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's... Dorn, Dorn's really underrated for sure. I, I, the thirty-one touchdowns, I couldn't ignore that. That's yeah, that's insane. That's how yeah. many and... Peter Warwick scored in his entire career. Um, oh, <laughs> and that's a Florida State record. So I mean, geez. Yeah, this, he was he was right before Ike Riedel and Jacquez, and yeah, he he's very underrated. All right. Well, I'm glad he made your list. I made, I'm glad he made someone's list. <laughs> well, I'll throw my um, honorable mentions here, and then I'll let you give your floor state top five. Um, again, very tough. Uh, Fred Boletnikoff was a decent yeah. one. You know, he has his number retired, and we actually. Has I mean, some... he has the award named after him. But there you go. Um, so the best receiver every year, uh, named after him as well. He played before Ron Sellers in the early '60s. Um, so props to him. Some other guys I really liked watching, uh, Willie Reed was a really good wide receiver slash punt returner and actually won the MVP of the Orange Bowl when we lost to Penn State. It's one of the rare instances I've seen a losing team member get that award. It's impressive. Yep. Early 2000s, we had Crafonzo Thorpe. Um, he was incredibly dangerous. Um, and then Kelvin Benjamin was fantastic, but to me it was isolated into just really one season. And but he still does hold a four state record, um, and I've, I'm blanking on which one that is right now. But I think it was uh, touchdowns in a year. But oh, I, I was in, I thought it was gonna be tallest receiver uh, ever. Tall. <laughs> uh, no, I apologize. It was uh, yards in a one single yards in a game, and I'm sorry to say it was against the Gators. Uh, oh. It was over 260 yards in one single game. I remember that. <sighs> yeah, that was rough. It was pretty slippery, but. We understand Florida had some struggles around that time, and yeah, um, yeah, it's understandable. 
Um, one other honorable mention, and this was a guy I played in the early 90s, was Kez McCorvey. Um, he was teammates with E.J. Green for a while. And 93 was – a lot of success was due to his wide receiving ability. Okay. Why not? So – there's probably way too many honorable mentions, but oh, I, my, my list is crazy too. Um, my five, Florida State number five, Kelvin Benjamin. Um, <laughs> you're gonna like number four, uh, Greg Carr. <laughs> <laughs> is he really seriously number four? Oh, he's definitely number four. Just it's a lot of nostalgia of just him. <laughs> Hey, well, we're within the ten yard line. What are we gonna do? We're gonna throw a fade to fade. Greg Carr. <laughs> That's all we're gonna do. That's well, all they did with him. I, I mean, I don't get. I don't blame him. I mean, dude was um, super tall and and long arms. Yep. But that's all I've ever ever seeing is just throw a fade to at least yeah. once. Throw a fade to him. <laughs> see what happens. Finish your list, and when I'll tell the story. Yeah, you know. What yeah. I'm okay. Good. About. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number three, Rashard Green. He was pretty decent on the field too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, number two is Anquan Bolden, 81. <laughs> <laughs> then number one, of course, is Peter Warwick. Oh, okay. Um, it's, dude, it's like trying to catch a fish you know, <laughs> with your bare hands. Like, good luck. And it was fun, fun to watch. Great list. Um, I think the only one that I had on there that didn't make yours was Ron Sellers. Um, which is understandable because he played so long ago. So, should I go with the Greg Carr story? Yes, please. Okay. I want to hear your, your your version of it. Okay. So, Chris and I were at a Christmas event, and yep. it was a bunch of youth group kids. So, as, as any great fan would do, a, a game of pickup football ensued. I don't yep. think we even had a real football. It was one of the small, like foamy ones. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, this is in Gainesville, Florida. I'm visiting Chris for the weekend from Tallahassee. People probably knew I was a Florida State fan, but I was certainly not in. There was no other Florida State fans there. Chris's team was playing opposite me, and they get down in a, quote, goal line situation. Yeah, the goal <laughs> in the 20-foot yard. Right. Whatever you <laughs> would define that as. <laughs> right. So, I'm playing defense, and the quarterback suddenly yells, Greg Carr, Greg Carr, Greg Carr. I instantly knew what they were talking about. Yeah. There was no secret here. Greg Carr was 6'6". As a freshman, this guy was the only weapon that we had. So I knew they were going to throw a fade to the corner. So I adjust the defense. I go over and cover the corner. I couldn't cover the pass. They Greg Carred me. They did. The the, the Gators Greg Carred me. I, I, I knew it was coming. I saw it the whole way, and I was about two inches too short of deflecting the pass. I'm telling you, if it was a regular size football, it might be different. But the fact that it was a small <laughs> <laughs> made it a lot easier to Greg Carr. Made it a lot easier. Yep. You know what? You you may be surprised, and you may not. Uh, he's also tied for second all time in career touchdowns at Forest State. Really? Twenty nine. So there was a four way tie for twenty nine touchdowns in a career: Rashad Green, Ron Sellers, Greg Carr, and E.G. Green. I did not know that. Yep. So, you know, he actually could have been a legit, like, top five on my list, but this was a case for me where the numbers were deceptive because it was, we just didn't have anything going in those years. The offense was terrible, and he was the only weapon really had against a really bad conference. So I just couldn't, in my own mind, put him that high on the list. <laughs> he, he does. He gets that high just because of that story. <laughs> It was fun. It was just fun because uh, I'm pretty sure I was the receiver, or at least I think you were somewhat involved. Yeah. Um, and when the quarterback said it, just the look on your face, just that <laughs> I know what that is. Oh, I have to do something about this. <laughs> I don't think you were covering me. You were somewhere else, but you switched. Yep. Just so you could, because you knew. <laughs> and the look on your face was priceless. Like I know what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it turns out it's funny. Um, quick follow up. You know, we knew he wasn't going to go to the NFL. I don't know if he ever did, but Orlando had an arena football team for a short period of time, the Predators. Right. And I'm watching this game, and who was on this? Who is on the Orlando Predators playing wide receiver? But Greg Carr. 
I was I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I looked up. Sure enough. I, sure checked, enough. I went on my phone. I checked with Pete. I was like, yeah, he plays arena football now. That's crazy. Um, the team folded. I'm sure he gave it up too. I have no idea. But yeah, he's <laughs> – that's so funny he made so high on your list because he almost made an honor of mention from me. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Awesome. Well, that was a lot of fun. We we know that the fans have their own top five. We know that people are screaming, at least at me, saying, I, I can't believe you put it in this order. Why could you do that? But uh, instead of just yelling at the podcast, so there's some other ways we've invented so you can get in touch with us and share your feedback. Uh, we mentioned one of them, but Chris, what are all the ways people can get in touch with the podcast? Uh, yeah, we have plenty of ways. Um, the best way is our website, at floridafocuspodcast.libsyn.com, Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. Um, you can hit us up, Facebook and YouTube, at Florida Focus Podcast, Twitter, at Florida Focus Pod, and please feel free to, to email us at floridafocuspodcast at yahoo.com. Um, please uh, hit us up, leave comments. If, if there's a place that you're finding us on, and you can rate us, rate us really high. <laughs> give us five stars if, for whatever reason, you see a place that gives us six, give us six stars. Do it. Whatever it is, give us a like, give us two likes, two thumbs up, whatever you do, rate. <laughs> please do. Uh, but no, we'd, we'd like to hear from you all. Um, give us suggestions on, on other fave fives, um, other topics you want us to talk about. And please let me know what uh, your list um, consists of because I'd like to see um, – uh, how different or maybe alike they are from from mine and especially Brandon's. Sure, sure. And as we mentioned, we we've had previous feedback on our episode about the top Heisen winners. So in that same thread, if you feel it, send us your ranking of those. Send us your top five for both schools, and we'd love to hear why because we know that there's a lot of reasons that you might put one over the other. And all the feedback, uh, you know, it's all in good spirit. So we we would really welcome that uh, anytime you get the chance. Yep. Um, this is one of my more favorite episodes. I'm really glad that we got to put this down on in recording. Uh, was there anything else you want to leave the uh, listeners with before we go for the night, Chris? No, that's that's it. Just uh, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Again, send that comment that send that feedback in. We're working on ways to reward you for that. So stay tuned for more details. <laughs> <laughs>